Hi, Amos here, and today I'd like to talk to you about power, or more specifically, the Pico Power, which I have here. Now, Justin Wilson of Headamp is well known, of course, for his uh, electrostatic amps, but he's also well known for the Pico Dacken amp, which was his single portable solution. But since then, head fires have become pretty crazy, and they've got into a number of different things. First of those being uh, uh, high-end, multiple driver custom IMs, which have certain requirements uh, for in terms of amps, in terms of uh, high quality volume control and low output impedance. And for that, Justin created the, the Pico Slim, which I'll talk about in another video. And the other thing that people have been doing is taking in full-sized headphones out as a portable solution or transportable solution. And for that, portable amps tend to be not so great. I mean, generally they used, uh, more recently they've used uh, custom batteries, but recently, before that they used, uh, tend to use 9 volt batteries. And the results weren't so great, especially compared to a desktop amp, or and very especially compared to a high-end desktop amp. Uh, but they still could be quite expensive. So Justin's solution for that, of course, is the Pico Power. And again, a bit of history. Uh, what I like to call the old king of the hill was the Triad Audio, or Triad Audio Lisa 3, or L3, as it's now known. And it was special because it had two 9-volt batteries inside, giving a total of 18 volts, or actually more realis realistically about uh, 14 to 16 volts, of power available for the amp to, to power full-sized headphones. And that made it quite a good amp, um, although it was quite large. And so more a transportable solution than really a portable one. And probably nowadays, probably better as a, with its optional power supply as a desktop amp. However, of course, we also have the O2 which has become quite popular too, being cheap and cheerful, and having two 9 volt batteries and doing a pretty reasonable job with, with most headphones. Although, uh, portable solution? Uh, mm, no, I don't think so. Unless you have very, very big pockets. So this is Justin's solution, the Pico Power. And if I pop it out of its case and pop open the back of the amp, be careful of these screws, they tend to fall off on the floor the first time you do this, for which two spares are included, not surprisingly. Ta-da! We have two 9-volt batteries. And look at the size of the 9-volt batteries compared to the rest of the amp. And if I put a couple more on here, you sort of get the idea. It's only about the size of about four 9-volt batteries overall in volume. And that makes it probably the smallest dual 9-volt amp available. It must be the smallest actually, I've never seen one that's smaller, excluding ones with custom batteries, but anyhow, that makes it, what you sacrifice as a result of course is there's no charging circuit, you can't charge them, it's just an amp and nothing else. And a very simple amp at that. If I just put this down here for a second, now most, what most amps use inside are called op amps. And that's basically an entire amplification circuit on a chip. And I'll just show you a couple here in case you're not familiar. These things, and some amps allow you to, to change them around. And it changes the circuit, so you're changing the sound maybe a tiny bit, depending on the design. Oh, here are some uh, what are called SMD, or surface mount ones, on, a, on an adapter. And by circuit in a chip, if they used full-size components, this is, this is an op amp which uses full-size components. I mean, that's a whole bunch of transistors there. But the, the Pico Power, there's, if you imagine, only three transistors in the, the, the output circuit. It's just per channel, a buffer and three transistors. And it makes it a very simple design, and a very good performing one at that, which I'll talk about in a second. But before I do, what you get for your um, almost $500 is a very nicely milled aluminium case, too. You see that? It's like what you get inside get when you buy a, an Apple MacBook Pro or something like that very nicely designed, very high quality case, very beautifully uh, anodized and laser engraved by Justin. And it, it took two and a half years for, you know, for him, uh, since the announcement for him to actually ship an amp. And in that time, I think he probably would have spent a massive amount of time designing and uh, having this case made. Now, he has to work with about five different manufacturers just to design, the, just to have this product. And any one of those, there's problems, of course slows things down but very you can see very very high quality case I think probably maybe I don't know if it is the highest quality in the industry I've not seen better 
and that's where your a lot of your money goes of course is into that into that quality that's his specialty labor of love but also other aspects I'll just give it a polish because when I did the video I tried doing the video before and it came up with just fingerprints maybe that'll give you an idea of how quality how good the quality is if I just turn that in the light slowly the the quality extends to the design as well in many aspects I'll put it back in its case something simple as the volume knob the volume knob has very deep knurling it's obviously it's a custom one it's not just one off out of you know out of a catalog uh, but it also has a Teflon washer behind the knob so that it becomes somewhat stiff but very smooth and it's just right you can you can turn it easily quite a little bit of effort but it won't if you stick it in your pocket it's not suddenly going to move the volume knob is not going to move and it's a pretty short volume knob you can see there and the other thing is the switches they're, they're small rocker switches for the power and for the gain but if you look, if I turn it sideways, I hope you can see clearly you can see they just stick out about a millimetre and that's just enough that you can feel them and flip the switch but it, you can't, it's not going to switch in your, it's not going to switch in your pocket, like it's not suddenly going to jump from low to high gain in your pocket and blow your ears out if you've got custom IMs in it's just, just right and high quality sockets too which Justin will have tested with every kind of common headphone jack available, especially those irritating via blue ones that are made to be oversized and cause trouble. So the whole design is simple, straightforward and very well thought out. And if you to get a bit of a comparison, if I stick a, a standard dock in here you can see it's, it's pretty large compared to the volume knob. If I stick a right angle one in there that's where the, the, the small, the relatively small size of the pickup power kind of almost gets into trouble because you see it becomes, uh, it almost becomes too long but once you stick something else, once you attach something else like my my iPhone here which I've got my, with my sophisticated car mount attached, ha 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 uh, it, it becomes just about the right size, especially with something like an AK100 or, or what have you just a, it, you see, it gives you an idea of how small this amp is relatively. I mean, if I pull this apart and hold it up to an O2, it starts to be. This is where your money goes. Look, if you look at the difference, it's pretty, pretty plainly obvious what the difference is in in design and quality. Cheap and cheerful, basic, cheap components, or custom, or custom, or or high quality components, and the size difference that's where your money goes, that's what you're paying for. But also, I mean, people bought the, a lot of people bought the O2 because of the excellent measurements, and I believe Tyler in Fidelity measured the Pico Power, and it measured better than the O2. And it sounds a little bit smoother, there's a, people, the criticism of the O2 tends to be it sounds a little bit grainy, and I think the Pico sounds a little bit smoother as in like a lack of, a lack of grain, what we call grain, or lack of harshness. So in powering headphones, that's where it's most remarkable. It was designed, you know, Pico Power. It's designed to have more power. But um, with IEMs, it actually does a remarkably good job. That's where I found it actually probably works best even. Uh, I had a pair of Trelucent OnePlus 2s I had on loan, and I was using them with a modified uh, Astral, and, you know, AK100. And, uh, you know, that sounded pretty good. Uh, it was modified, of course, to get low output impedance because uh, this, the default AK100, prior to the Mark II version, had a high output impedance which was no good with uh, IEMs, with uh, you know, multiple armature, multiple balanced armature or the like. And uh, that was pretty good, you know, but I thought, you know, let's try it with a Pico Power and see if there's any difference. And I didn't expect much, but actually with, with more complex music where, uh, you know, uh, I seem to get, you know, like jazz and classical, I seem to get a little bit better instrument separation and detail with the Pico Power. I mean, maybe not 500 odd dollars worth of better performance in comparison, but all the same, I mean, that shows the level of quality in in the design. Now with full-sized headphones, uh, I'll say now it's not going to do a remarkable job with planers, but it, all the same, with most full-sized headphones, I was pretty impressed with the, with the results. I use them with these Symphones Magnums, which I'll talk about in another video. They're no longer made. Um, but you can still buy the drivers, uh, which are very high quality drivers, uh, you know, kind of high quality back, 
uh, the old HP 1000, uh, PS1, HP 2 kind of level of quality driver. Uh, you can still buy them made in wood cups from a uh, company which I'll link to later. Um, and I, with these, which are a high sensitivity and low impedance, with an AK100 and this, the overall result was really, really very good. And um, I, it, not just myself, I really enjoyed listening with it, but a lot of people were impressed by the, the, the result with that overall, overall result with that rig. Uh, with planers, with the LCD2s and LCD3s, I thought it sounded a little bit, they sounded a little bit kind of, they're, they're dynamic, they didn't sound as dynamic as with the Pico Power as, as uh, you know, a full-sized headphone amp. They're kind of lacking in that excitement value which the, the planers can deliver. So, but with the LCD X and XC, some of that came back because the LCD X and XC require less power. They're much more sensitive than the uh, LCD2 and LCD3s. And the only limitation was, you know, when you start to get into the complex music, you start to get a bit of uh, uh, sound stage compression. So the sound stage tend to collapse when things got complex. But all the same, Pico Power did a remarkable job with them. And with the HD800s too. I mean, I mean, you know, with HD800s you have to use an adapter and, uh, oh, where are we? And uh, maybe not, but um, all the same, just to test, it still did a really, really good job. Even if I, I plugged it onto one of my, my best uh, DAC and get out, break out the high-end headphones, fantastic results. So if you're looking for a high-class, well-measuring, uh, well-designed uh, amp, this is my recommendation. And this is a keeper for me. I'm not going to sell this one. I've sold, gone through a fair few amps, but this one I'm, I'm keeping because I take it off. You know, I'll, I'll take it to meet one way or another and test a lot of headphones with it. And I get a fairly consistent idea of how they're going to perform out of the Pico Power. You know, planners being the only limitation. So, I hope you enjoyed my video about the Pico Power, and uh, I look forward to seeing you on Headfire. If you have any comments or questions or anything I've missed, please let me know in the comments. Thank you very much.